We're going to be working with intervals again. And as always, or almost as always, we start off with the number line, which is the tool that we use to show where each number in our number system is located in relation to each other. Right now, we're just dealing with integers. All right, we number all the way to six, and the homework problem starts off with a left-facing bracket at six and an arrow moving to the left all the way to negative infinity. That means the arrow goes forever to the left. And so first, look at the arrow, the green arrow. The green arrow represents all of the numbers to the left of six. We would also say all of the numbers less than six. Those are going to be in our interval. The fact that we have a bracket at six means that six is also going to be included in our interval. In other words, if you let x equal any number in our number system, then x could actually equal 6 along with any of the numbers to the left of 6. That's what a bracket means in this context. Now what we're being asked to do is write the interval notation that accompanies this graph. And so, what we're going to write is a parenthesis and then negative infinity, and then a comma, and then six, and then a bracket. The reason for the parenthesis around negative infinity is that negative infinity and positive infinity always take a parenthesis. They never, ever, ever take a bracket, even when a bracket is being used in the other position. Also, intervals are also written left to right. I hate making a typo. Let's correct that. There we go. Intervals are always written left to right. Since negative infinity is on the left and 6 is on the right, we write the interval that way, even though when we graph that particular interval, the arrow moves from 6 to negative infinity. If you just remember that when we write the interval, we write the, nu the numbers or the symbols in it just the way we write the English language, which is left to right.